Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up automated device enrollment for both Mac and iOS devices using Apple Business Manager and Microsoft Intune. So if you've watched my other previous video about enrolling iOS devices, we went through the overview of the enrollment methods in BOID and company owned. And with these corporate devices, we do have the ability to set up automated device enrollment with Apple Business Manager and Apple School Manager. Apple Configurator is something that I'm not going to be discussing in today's video, but it does um, or is one of the methods available with the enrollment of devices and management of devices themselves. With Apple Business Manager and Apple School Manager, we have what's known as automated device enrollment. With automated device enrollment, you can go ahead and procure your hardware, such as your Mac and iOS devices, directly from a vendor. With this, we can go ahead and integrate directly with Apple Business Manager, and they can send us the serial IDs of everything that we order. And within Apple Business Manager, we can connect it to Microsoft Intune as well, too, so that we can, one, sync the devices from Apple Business Manager into Intune so that we can apply policies and profiles down to those devices, as well as configure enrollment profiles, which I'll be showing you in this video, that define the out-of-box experience for the user and all the settings that they see when they boot up that device. So you, as the administrator, can come into Intune as well, create all of your configuration policies and profiles such as setting the password requirements, lockout screen uh, requirements, things of that nature, as well as all the applications that you want to push down to the devices. From there, we can go ahead and send the devices directly to the end users. Once the end user gets that device, they can turn it on and immediately have the management profile pushed down to the device and they can self-deploy with all of your policies, all of your settings, your configurations, and your applications that you've pre-configured into Intune so they can immediately go from box to production in a matter of a couple minutes. So it's a pretty powerful experience and I'll be showing you guys in this video the settings that you would need to configure for everything that you would need for automated device enrollment. So getting into it here, some of the prerequisites that you'll need to get done and completed beforehand is just to set up an MDM push certificate within Microsoft. I've published a video that shows you guys how to do this and it's very easy, it takes a couple of minutes. You want to do this at the customer level. You also want to apply for Apple Business Manager account if you haven't already, if you don't already have one set up. This is something that goes through an approval process, but generally it can happen in under five days. And then you'll be able to configure all the settings that you'll see here today. So these are the steps that we're gonna be walking through today in the sense of the high level of all the, the settings that you need to configure for this to set up correctly. And I'll be walking through all of the application settings and profiles that we're going to create as well too. For some of the compliance and configuration profiles, those might be in a separate video, but this will get you set up so that you could start off with the automated deployment as well with Apple Business Manager. So getting into the demo here, the first thing we'll want to do is pop into our Apple Business Manager account and we're going to want to set up a connection with Intune. So the first thing I'll do here, just to preface before we get into that, is just show you that I have set up the federation with my Azure Active Directory account here. I've got my domain set up. I use a text record to validate ownership. And then I also federated the authentication with Azure Active Directory. And I resolved all the naming conflicts and things like that. I do have a full video, like I mentioned, on the YouTube channel to show you how to do that. So I recommend you guys go check that out before moving forward here. The next thing that we want to do is create this connection with Intune that I've already done here, but we'll show you how to do in just a second. So under the device management settings, you're going to click on add an MDM server. It's going to give you the ability to add a name here for the server. You can just call it Intune like I did. Then it allows you to populate the server settings with the public key that you'll grab from Intune. So we'll pop into the 365 Endpoint Manager Admin Center. And just so you guys know, I am using a tenant with Microsoft 365 Business or Business Premium, as it's now known from the name change a couple weeks ago. So the first thing I wanna do here is go under the uh, devices section and you can choose either iOS or Mac. It doesn't matter. Um, you can just click on Mac here 
click on Mac OS enrollment and we're going to go ahead and click on the enrollment program tokens. And I've already got this set up here just for demo purposes, but when you guys go to add one, you'll just click on add. You'll click on the agree box here and you'll download your public key. So the public key will download and you'll pop back into the endpoint or the Apple Business Manager portal. You'll choose the file and you'll submit that. Once you do, this is when Intune will pop up here and you can download this token. And this is just the exchange we're making to create the connection. So you'll put your Apple ID here. This is the administrator account in Apple Business Manager used to set up the account with or who has administrative rights. And then you'll upload that token that you just got from the Apple Business Manager portal. And from there, we have the connection set up and you'll see what I do here, which is under the improvement tokens, I have the active token set up here. So the other thing before uh, we go fully into the endpoint manager portal here that you'll want to do is you'll want to set up the VPP portal for getting apps and being able to garner the company portal app from the app store here. So you'll have to consent if this is your first time going through this to the terms and conditions here. And then you'll see this content on the left show up for apps and books. So when you go here, you can just search for Intune Company Portal and it'll ask you how many licenses you want. Just get enough for every user in the account or anticipate it, it is zero dollars. So you can really get as many as you want here. Once this fully installs, you can go back into your settings and go under the apps and books section. And from here, you can download your server token. And the server token is what we're going to upload into Intune as well too, so that we can deploy a profile with the company portal app and the users can use multi-factor authentication to enroll that device. So when I go back to the Intune portal here, or the endpoint manager portal, I'm gonna go down to tenant administration and from tenant administration, I can go into the connectors and tokens. And here under Apple, you'll see Apple VPP tokens. And again, I've already set this up just for demo purposes, but you guys would click on create. You're enter your token name. It can be whatever you want. I just named it company portal. In this case, you can put in again your administrative Apple ID here, and you can upload that file that you've downloaded here from Apple Business Manager in this section. Once you do that and you review all the settings and choose to create, I'll just show you here. It'll require me to put this in. In this section here, you, if you are getting this from another MDM provider, let's say you're using Jamf, you may want to say this, but if this is your first ever deployment, you can say no. For region, United States, whatever country region you're in, type of VPP account, in this case it's business because we're using Apple Business Manager, but if you're using Apple School Manager, use education. And for automatic updates, you can choose to do this so that it automatically updates the company portal app over time, if you had other applications that were part of this, not just company portal, it can update those. Once you're done here, you can click on grant and review and create this. The key part here that I had to learn to do before you can fully get this to work is you have to go over here to the three dots and click on sync. Otherwise, as you see here in this other one that I created where I was trying to troubleshoot, it's got the last sync time of 69. I don't know if that's a, a bug, um, but I had to go ahead and click on sync for my token location to show up and also for the last sync time to reflect the current date. So just note that or else you won't be able to see it in our next section here, which is the enrollment profile that we're going to create, which defines the out of box experience for the end user when they do boot up that device. So let's go ahead and do that now. If you go back into the devices section here, we're going to go into the iOS or Mac section again. It doesn't really matter. And from here, we'll click on iOS enrollment. Click back on enrollment program tokens. And we'll click on the token that we created. So with this token, we can click on profile. And with profile, you have the option to do iOS or Mac. 
I'm going to select iOS here. You'll see a few different settings between the two, and it's mostly around deploying with the company portal app. So we'll just name it company profile here, and for user affinity, you're going to most likely 99% of cases choose with user affinity. Without user affinity is saying that it is a kiosk or some type of automated device. So select where users must authenticate. You have company portal and you have setup assistant. I always like to choose the company portal because one, I can deploy that with VPP automatically. And two, setup assistant doesn't support multi-factor authentication. So I like to do that because most of my tenants have multi-factor authentication associated with them for security. Install so company portal with VPP. Here it will default to your token if it's configured properly. And this is where if you hadn't done the sync button, it wouldn't show up here. And you'd be wondering where it was, which happened to me, but um, you do have to go ahead and sync it there for it to show up. So we're going to use this token for the run company portal in single app mode until authentication. It's basically saying uh, that you cannot use any other application until you authenticate with your Azure Active Directory credentials. So it has that managed profile on there. This also doesn't support multi-factor authentication, so I leave it off. By default, if you're using Company Portal, it is a supervised profile that you're pushing out here. So for locked enrollment means that the user cannot unenroll the device from management, which they do on BYOD devices. So you want to say yes if it is going to be pushed out to corporate-owned devices of which you wouldn't want them to remove the profile. Sync with computers, again, this is subjective to the business, but most likely if this is a managed iOS uh, device here, then you may not want it to sync with their personal Mac devices or something like that. So in this case, I'm going to put deny all, but you do have the option. And then lastly here, we have a device name template. Um, you'll see here it gives you an example where you can name you know, the serial number and device type so that you have a unique identifier for the devices for organization so it would separate out iOS from Mac from um, you know Mac Pros and things like that so that's up to you again depends on how you want to manage that I'm gonna go ahead and say no for now just click on next and then here's where we're defining the out-of-box experience for the end user so this is for department we can just say you know appears to end users about configuration screen and all we need to say is uh, you know this could just be t minus 65 and then put in a phone number here and then for the abilities to define what the out-of-box experience is you can go through each one of these you could tell them all off to hide if you really wanted to but this is all the configuration settings they would see on their iOS device naturally here and you can choose to show or hide some of these things so the only ones um, I would pay attention to uh, is the Apple ID here so with the Apple ID if you're setting this up to show they can put in their managed Apple ID at this time so there if you're setting up federation you can put in your managed Apple ID in the sense of your Azure Active Directory credentials and it will create that data separation on the device but you can review the other ones here and determine which ones that you would want to show to an end user there. So after I'm done, I can review. This is just a summary of everything I'm creating. And then again, go ahead and click on Create. So back on this page, I just want to go through real quick before we move on to a macOS profile. So we'll call it here. macOS enrollment profile and then for this one you see that you have a lot less options so we don't have the ability for the company portal act with with max and you only have the ability to do locked enrollment and with user affinity in the settings and then configure all the rest of the settings here as far as the out-of-box experience so just take note of that that's all I wanted to uh, to show you there on that page just so you know there are there are a couple differences there so after you've gotten this um, profile created for iOS enrollment, you can go ahead and assign it to certain devices. And if you click on add devices, you're going to try to look for devices that have been uploaded into the token profile. So I wanted to show you that here as well too. 
So by default here, if you click on devices, this is doing an automatic sync and it'll show you when it was last requested and last successful. And it'll populate any devices here that you're garnering or uploading into ABM. So I wanted to show you that as well too. So under accounts here, the other thing that you can do in the sense of adding some enrollment information is if you go under the device management settings, you can go to customer numbers and you can click on edit here. And here you see you have the ability to add a reseller ID or an Apple customer number. The reseller ID could be just a vendor that you're working with to procure the Mac devices or iOS devices. And you can add them here so that they have access to populate the serial IDs whenever you make an order so that you can immediately then sync them over to Intune to enroll into the profile of which you're going to push down to the device. And you can also apply all of your configuration profiles and applications as well to an Intune. So this is the reseller ID. This is where you would come to do that. The other portion of this here is the devices. So you can go ahead, if you haven't set up the reseller ID there in that section, you can manually do this by uploading the serial numbers or typing them out here in comma separated values or putting an upload of a CSV or an order number and you can choose to enroll them into the MDM solution. So if I think, so I start typing something generic here, you'll notice that um, I want to assign to a server and then for the server, you're choosing Intune that you set up there and you click on done to upload those devices there. Once they're uploaded, you can either do a sync on demand or you can let this do its daily sync and populate the devices in here for you. And from there, you can choose to assign them various profiles whenever you select them. So if you have different settings for different users, potentially you can set those up here and assign them different profiles. Otherwise, you'll know, you notice here that you can set default profiles for all devices that are being synced in for Mac or iOS of the ones that you've already created here. So you can automate it a little bit if you find consistency in the way that you want the out-of-box experience to be for all of your users. So the last couple of things that I wanted to show you in the portal here is um, whenever you're setting up these devices as well, you also want to consider the company portal app being a required device in the Intune portal here so that it does update automatically over time with any new updates that come out. So in this, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the app section and I'm going to click on all apps and I'm going to click on add. And I've already got it set up here, but you would go to the iOS store app for the iOS devices and you click on select and you can search in the app store and you, you could just type in Intune it's really is the easiest way if I can spell it right and you'll find company portal here when you select this you have the ability to go ahead and white label this whatever you want or define a minimum operating system and you could say it's going on to an iPad an iPhone and iPad and you can configure other settings here. Scope tags, I'm not going to worry about. For this one here, you're going to click on all devices for required. This means that it's automatically going to install. This will happen too on devices that are BYOD that fully enroll in the device management of the uh, section there whenever they are enrolling their, their devices. Available for enrolled devices just means that it's going to be in the company portal app and they have the ability to download it, but they're not. it's not going to auto install. Available with or without enrollment means that this is giving them the ability to uh, see the app if they are not fully enrolled in the MDM solution. It may just be using the company portal app to view applications of which they can download. And then uninstall commands are available as well too if you ever needed that. So you have your review and create. You can go ahead and create it. I already did. I just wanted to show you some of the settings there but I already have it set up and set to auto update for my iOS devices there. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys would like to see more content around Microsoft 365, Intune, and modern deployment. Thanks guys and have a great day.